Welcome to Fading Memories, a podcast with advice, wisdom, and hope from caregivers who have lived the experience and survived to tell the tale. Think of us as your caregiver best friend. Welcome back, listeners, and thank you for selecting Fading Memories for your listening pleasure today. With me once again is Dr. Jennifer Stelter. You may remember her from the two episodes of the Busy Caregiver's Guide to Advanced Alzheimer's. Those two episodes were the last two of December 2019, and she has brought along her business partner, Jessica Ryan. They are partners in the Neuro Essence essential oil business, and we are discussing essential oil use in dementia care today. So thank you for joining me, ladies. Thank you. We appreciate you having us. So I know a lot of people are big on essential oils. I know some of the benefits like lavender to help induce sleep and uh, what is it? Peppermint, spearmint, peppermint for getting you wake or citrus. There you go for waking up in the morning. But other than that, kind of kind of out in the dark. So who would like to start with maybe some basics on essential oils for anybody that's only partly dialed in like me, and then we can discuss how to use them for dementia care. Absolutely. So with essential oils, the great thing about essential oils is that everybody benefits, right? So when you use an essential oil for anybody, everybody is smelling it. So that aromatherapy sort of, you know, it gets to everyone. So it's kind of a two for one uh, special. So especially when we're using them in dementia, right, our caregivers are also going to experience that. And a lot of times they're experiencing those same symptoms like frustration and exhaustion and, you know, all different types of anxiety and depression and such like that. So it's really a great tool to use and bring in. The lovely part about essential oils is that they are made from plants, right? And so our bodies recognize them because they're made of cells. And so what they do inside of a plant is often mirrored inside of our bodies. And they really act as the immune system of the plant. They're antifungal, antibacterial, and antiviral in nature. And they really help the plant to navigate through vegetation and competing vegetation. They attract pollinators, all those beautiful scents, you know, they'll attract things, but also there are scents that will repel. So it's very interesting that we, which kind of brings me to memory and your scent, your your memory of a scent, if you will. When you associate a memory with a scent, it's 75% more likely to stay in your brain. So you think about that, like when you were little, um, I, I always use the, the uh, example that my grandmother used to bake oatmeal cookies. And if I smell oatmeal, co- oatmeal cookies now, I can close my eyes. I can see her galley kitchen. All the details are there. And it just is like it was yesterday. And so it's a great tool to use, obviously, when we're having trouble with our memory. Now, as good of a, of a positive reinforcement that that can be, We also want to always bring this and let somebody smell it first, because if it brings on positive emotions, negative effects. So if you have something that is, you know, associated with a negative experience in your life, right, it's going to bring up that negative experience. The great thing about essential oils is that there are several essential oils that have the same or similar therapeutic benefits. So you can use things that smell like flowers, trees, citruses, you know, even like uh, flowers, anything like that. And they, whatever your preference is, you can go for a specific oil that has a therapeutic benefit. So for example, some people don't like the smell of flowers. So lavender is not going to be a great tool to bring down anxiety or help for sleep or anything like that. And we can move to something like sandalwood or another tree, like, you know, something that's maybe more grounding and has more of a must, you know, like a, a grounding smell. So the, you want to always have those options for your patients. Um, because you never want to just stick them with one thing. That makes um, sense. I have a quick yeah. question. Absolutely. And I think I know the answer to this, but I'm assuming we all process scents slightly different. Because we have a tree, and unfortunately, it's on my neighbor's property. And when it blooms, it smells terrible to me. And other people <laughs> walk by and go, oh, that tree smells so beautiful. And I'm like literally holding my breath when I walk by this tree. <laughs> Thankfully, it doesn't bloom for too long, you know late spring, early, well, springtime. And then once it starts warming up, I think the blooms fall off, but 
that when you were talking about the negative association with a scent, that's the first thing that popped into my head was this absolute tree. And it's a pretty tree. So sure. that, that would be different. another reason to, to um, test it before you like invest in a whole giant bottle of lavender or something. Cause I got, I would prefer lavender over sandalwood. I know that for a fact, but might have to check with the hubby. So that's, right. that's another mm-hmm. reason to, you know, think about that. And um, they used to bake cookies or, you know, the, like the Otis Spunkmeyer heat bacon, bacon eat, I guess. They would do that at my mom's memory care residence and oh, it drove me nuts because I'm like, people, I don't need cookies. I need to watch my weight. <laughs> you walk in there, it's like, oh, chocolate chip cookies. I'm assuming they must have done that as sort of a, um, I don't want to say basic, but kind of a simple two for one aromatherapy and snack kind of deal. Mm-hmm. It could be to stimulate appetite. Oh, that that then, makes sense too. Okay, so you answered my question. We do all process scent differently, so absolutely. Well, and, and to your point that we were talking about, Jennifer, it's you know that scent of olfactory, right? So, or that sense of olfactory. And so, when we talk about our use of the dementia connection model, we talk about using our five senses. But olfactory is actually the strongest scent that we have when it comes to being able to influence our limbic system. It has a direct influence on our limbic system and our brain, which houses our amygdala and our hippocampus, which our amygdala is responsible for generating emotions and our hippocampus is responsible for generating memories. And so when we are smelling in sense, we are actually triggering that limbic system. And so the goal is what Jessica was speaking to and what you're saying, Jennifer, is you want to make sure that these scents are positive, that it, the person prefers it because you want to generate positive feelings and of course, positive memories. Um, and so with the other scents that we have, you know, um, what is auditory, visual and such, a, you know, for those, they are indirectly influencing the limbic system, meaning that they have to go through another piece of the, a part of the brain before they get to the limbic system. So, but that's why the olfactory stimulation is so powerful when we use the dementia connection model with our residents and our family caregivers and families, so. And to add to that, the great part about it is a lot of times, you know, with dementia patients, they start to lose their sense of smell. So people want to know, is this still going to be a beneficial tool to use? And the answer is yes, because the molecules actually travel through the nose, through the olfactory uh, bulb and into the limbic system. So, and they're actually able to cross the blood brain barrier. And currently we don't have a lot of things that do that synthetically. So essential oils can cross that blood brain barrier and actually, you know, get in that. And it takes about 22 seconds for you to start having a response. So the great thing about this is, is that you get almost an immediate response. Um, You can use these a couple of different ways, usually with our patients and and, and with residents and such, we like to stay stay with either uh, aromatic use or topical use. We don't really suggest ingesting. Um, Aromatic use is going to be anything, any way that they're smelling it right? So once that happens, you want to affect the brain. So when you want to affect mood, memory, anything that has to do with that, you want them to be smelling that. So diffusers, we, I think we were talking before we got on camera here about diffusers. Diffusers are probably the least intimidating way to use an essential oil. And the reason is, is it's, it's simply just a, you know, a device where you put some water in it and you put a couple of drops of essential oil in there, you turn it on, it turns off when the water runs out couple of things to note about that though. When you are using water, you never wanna use tap water because it crosses the blood brain barrier. A lot of times people have, you know, there's certain things that are allowed, they're allowable, you know, in percentages and small percentages to be in your tap water. Like for example, where I live, there's healthy levels of arsenic in our water. So that being said, we always we recommend if you are going to use a diffuser to always use either bottled water or uh, distilled water. Um, This can be a little cumbersome when we're talking about dementia patients, especially if they're in later stages, right? We have to worry about, you know, pulling it out of the wall, drinking it, those types of things. So we have a, a really great tool, and this is something that should be used all the time. It's fantastic. They're called personal diffuser dots. Basically, all it is is it's felt on one side and it's sticky on the other. It's about this big in diameter. So like a quarter, oh, that's a quarter, a little, little bit less than a quarter. And what you do is you drop about three to four drops of essential oil on there. And then you come up to them and you stick it underneath their lapel. They don't even know it's there. And it's a personal <laughs> diffuser for about six to eight hours. When you're done, pull it off, throw it away. 
So you always want to just throw away that sticker before the, the clothing is laundered. And the great part about it is in a community, you can individually right? Put different things on different people for different, you know, different reasons or different uh, therapeutic benefits that they're looking for, right? So that's a really simple tool. And then you don't have to worry about anybody even knowing it's there. Um, so that's a really great way to do it. Uh, earlier on sets, you can use things like diffuser jewelry, right? So they have necklaces and bracelets, those types of things. Um, you can always, always use them topically. We always encourage when you're using them topically, you always want to use a carrier oil. Essential oils are extremely concentrated. A five milliliter bottle, which would look about, this is the size of a five milliliter bottle. I'll give you an example. It it's takes 200. Inch, inch of liquid, basically. Yeah, yeah, it's nothing. It's, it's tiny. Five milliliter bottle. If I have a bottle of rose essential oil, it takes 250,000 rose petals to create that five milliliter bottle. So you can imagine the concentration on there. The beauty of that is that it's great for the body, but we don't want it to sit on top of the skin. Oftentimes what happens is a lot of people will poo poo the use of essential oils because they'll say that they're allergic or they have some sort of skin sensitivity. You always use a carrier oil. Carrier oil can be anything that's fat soluble. So things like coconut oil, vitamin E oil, jojoba oil, almond oil. And we always recommend with our vintage population that we use a 10 to 1 drop uh, of you know, your, your dilution. So 10 drops of carrier oil to 1 drop of essential oil for our vintage population. And the reason is they have they have thinner skin, right? And so what that does is it takes it off the top of the, the, the layers of skin and it drives it deeper into the tissue and it protects the skin from sensitivity. We also recommend doing a patch test before you, you know, go ahead and slather it on. But the great thing is, is that you can use this topically and you can put it on pulse points, you know, the wrists, behind the ears, the back of the neck. And not only are they getting it topically, which takes about two minutes to enter the bloodstream, but they're also getting it limbically because they're smelling it. So it's kind of a double whammy. So it's a really great thing to do. But this is something that you can use. I don't want to say but, but in addition to, you can use this. And this is a great thing, a great tool for the family members to come when they come in and they are visiting. Oftentimes we'll hear families that'll say like, I don't know what to do. You know, I come to visit mom and I sit down and I just sit there. And this is a great tool when we have these in the communities, they can go ahead and give them a little hand massage and they're getting the benefits of touch and that essential oil and their bonding. And that is so important when it comes to that. So it's a really great tool for a lot of different reasons. Um, so those are really great ways to use them. There are some safety issues we like to talk about. Um, I know a lot of people will say things like they're natural, they can't hurt you, you know, well, they're plants. And, you know, if we talk about opioid addictions, cocaine overdoses, poison oak, you know, these are all plants. So we do have to use them with, you know, some caution. There are certain essential oils that we do not recommend bringing into uh, any type of population that has the elderly in it because they tend to be on certain, uh, you know, medications like blood thinners. So clove is one we stay away from because it tends to intensify medication. And wintergreen mm. is a natural blood thinner. So those are two that we absolutely want to stay away from. Good to know. When, My husband's on blood thinners. <laughs> yeah, so no winter green for him. Um, and again, the great thing about essential oils is that there are other essential oils, right, that can be replaced for the benefit that he might find in the winter green. Also with essential oils, and this is one of the things that Dr. Stelter and I love to say, is that when we avoid medications and we can come and bring an essential oil as an alternative or even a complement, what we're doing is reducing toxic load, but that essential oil can have upwards of 35 health benefits. So instead of getting side effects, you get side benefits. So you might be using essential oil, for example, peppermint. Um, you had mentioned peppermint before. Peppermint is amazing for focus. And back in the 50s, teachers used to use mints before tests because it actually increased their test scores. And that's the reason why. But peppermint is fantastic for invigorating. It opens up the airwaves. It's great for indigestion. It can be great for, uh, you know, head tension, all kinds of other things. So you might use it to wake you up, but you are going to get all those side benefits as well. So that's a really great reason to bring these in as well. Um, 
I just want to go back to what you were saying too, Jessica, about, you know, these working so quickly, right? It takes about 22 seconds when you're um, smelling the essential oil and and in about 20 minutes, your whole body is is covered in surface, right? And when we, you know, NeuroEssence, we really built our company on this approach of teaching people about non-pharmacological approaches and really trying to reduce the use of psychotropic medications in the dementia population. And so our passion is so much built behind that. And that's why we encourage some of these tools and we say, build your toolbox, right? So going back to it works so quickly, which is wonderful because when we give an RX medication to a, a resident, maybe they're agitated or they acted out aggressively or whatever it might be. And the nurse or maybe even caregiver are trying to calm them down that medication is not going to start working until 30 minutes after they've taken their that dose, where essential oils start to work in 22 seconds. So they have all these side benefits. They work faster. They're just as effective, if not better. And so it, it doesn't hurt to try them, right? Try them and get your aha moment and see if that works. Um, that's actually how Jessica and I met each other. Um, I had been working and contracting with a major uh, long-term care company here in the Midwest. And she came knocking on my door. We were building out a new memory care community. And she said, hey, I've got something for you, Dr. Stelter. And I said, essential oils. I said, I use these at the spa. And she's like, oh, you're funny, right? And then, um, you know, at, she just sent a whole bunch of clinical trials my way to look at all the evidence out there that has been shown in research on how these are effective for people with dementia. And I was astounded. And so I actually started to use them personally and got my aha moment. And then I brought them into the community after knowing that I felt safe using them, brought them into the community to work, you know, to have my staff work with them with our uh, residents who had dementia and we found unbelievable results with them. You know, we had them in our dining program. We had them in the morning, we were using them. We were had them during activities. We had people using them for sleep. I mean, it was just unbelievable. And then at that time, not only did I use them for people with dementia, but I actually was overseeing a behavioral health program. So we were working with people with mental illness. They were using them. Our social workers were using them with their just, you know, everyday patients or residents, excuse me. And uh, there's, you know, there was, a, there was a lot to be had and uh, people just love them. Well, you mentioned clinical trial, which is wonderful to know that they've actually been tested in that capacity. But I have a quick question and then we'll talk about how which oils are beneficial for which um, issues, I guess, is, a, is the best way of putting it. But if you're using the same oils every day, do you build up a tolerance or, you know, is your, your limbic, I think I'm saying this right, reaction, does it get decrease or is it just, it's not like medication that you build up a tolerance and eventually it becomes less effective? So the reason that that happens, right, is that you're taking the exact same medication. So FDA rules cite that when you take a medication, whether you get a pill, let's say we're talking about Vicodin, for example, you get that Vicodin here, you get it in California, every single pill has to be made up exactly the same way, the same constituents, there can be nothing different. What happens is if we take a medication over and over our bodies, right, they acclimate to it. So you either have to up your dosage or change. The great things about essential oils is that they're harvested. And every time they're harvested, they're slightly chemically different. For example, you know, the climate, the soil, the temperature are indicative to that plant or tree. And they're also indicative or they're also changing all the time. So I can have a bottle of oregano, right? And my, I take it. And then the next time I open up another bottle of oregano, the body doesn't recognize it because it's slightly chemically different, you know, just because of those alterations in the soil, the temperature and the climate. That's really interesting to know because I am I am really good at building up tolerances to medications. So for most of my adult life, I'm always looking for the holistic, homeopathic, natural, organic solution to an issue versus a pharmaceutical one, if that's an option. Just because, you know, like years and years ago, I had horrific acid reflux. And they, you know, so they gave you the press, I think it was, oh, Prevacid. And I said, okay, well, this is great, but we need to figure out how to make the acid reflux go away because my system will just eventually stop paying any attention to this medication. And the doctor said, no, 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 that's not possible. And I believed it because I did not go to medical school. So I'm not going to second guess them. And I was younger, so I might second guess them more now. And it did. It stopped working. And so I just had to learn to reduce stress and I had to change every, I mean, like I couldn't eat 
pizza, anything with tomatoes was horrible. And it took a few years, but eventually I got to the point where I healed myself and I didn't have to take that medication anymore, which was good because in the interim, they've learned some not so great things about those drugs. So it's much better if you can fix it naturally, but I know that's not always an option. So now we're going to take a quick break for an ad. These ads help me continue to bring the show to you for free. I started using a product that all you caregivers need to try. I started taking AG1 from Athletic Greens after my workouts because I needed a quick and healthy way to refuel my body. While there are lots of options, most don't taste great, and I don't eat or drink things that don't taste good. So what is AG1? Well, with one delicious, mildly tropical flavored scoop, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins and minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to fuel you for your crazy day ahead. AG1 helps support mental clarity throughout the day and you know how important brain health is to this gal. It has over 7,000 five-star reviews and costs less than $3 a day. And you know your time is worth more than three bucks. Athletic Greens was created when the founder experienced a ton of gut health issues and ended up on a complicated supplement routine to recover. I'm sure you're aware that there may be a connection between poor gut health and dementia, so this is another way to help protect your brain. As caregivers to someone with a cognitive impairment, this is also an excellent way to get much needed nutrition into someone who is slowly losing the ability to eat. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D, which is also important for brain health, and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is go to athleticgreens.com slash emerging. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash emerging to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Now back to our conversation. Well, and you're talking about choice there. You know, you're, you're giving people, you wanted a choice either to take this medication or to take something different or maybe in combination, right? And that's really what, where we come from. It's, it's give the residents when they are still making their own decisions, give them the choice to decide how they want their treatment to be, right? And same with, you know, people with dementia, when they progress, allow their caregivers to have a choice. Do I want mom on medication? Do I not? If she's on a medication and I want her in a really low dose, can I complement it with a non-pharmacological tool like essential oils? Sure, you can, right? And so these are things that we just want to teach people about that, you know, you have choices for your loved one and for your residents to be able to practice, you know, whatever way they want to practice, which is really great. That makes sense. Okay. So we've mentioned peppermint and citrus for waking up, um, also peppermint for focus. We know lavender is good for sleep. So what are some of the, the typical situations that you guys have found tremendous benefits with quote unquote treating with essential oils? That might not be the right term, but it's Monday. It's the only term I can come up with. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, we, we actually have something called the perfect day, um, that we've come up with, which it has been tremendous for, uh, you know, our dementia residents, um, we call it the perfect day for that reason. So in the morning, peppermint, obviously, and we talked about the benefits of peppermint and we, we combine that with wild orange and wild orange is a citrus. One of the great things about all citruses is that they're mood elevators. So what they do is they help to promote the, the release of serotonin in the brain. So Citrus is also very antibacterial. Uh, it has a chemical constituent in there called limonene. And if you check your hard surface cleaners, that's actually the active ingredient in there. So it's a really great thing because, you know, if you think about this kind of climate that we're in, you know, anything that can help us sort of, you know, promote, uh, you know, some part of our immune system is great as well. So peppermint and wild orange together, we suggest in the morning because obviously it's going to be invigorating. You know, if you've ever smelled peppermint, that opens opens up the airways, right? And that's kind of one thing that I, I, I missed and I'd like to share is that essential oils really, they don't heal anything. What they do is they restore the body back to natural balance. That's what's really interesting about it. So it's, it's really promoting the body doing what it's doing. I'll ex explain. If you think about when you get like a head cold, if you have, you know, you're tired, 
you have uh, asthma, allergies, anything like that, where you feel like you have head tension, you feel like you just can't get relief from that, your capillaries in your nose actually constrict. When you just simply breathe in peppermint, it encourages those to dilate. So you're opening those up. So what it's doing is it's encouraging that natural way that the body is supposed to be working. And that is the great thing about the essential oils. So that's why a lot of times you don't, you don't see side effects and such from essential oils. The other thing is that the, their body metabolizes them. You know, when you take a medication or a synthetic medication, the body really doesn't know what to do with it as far as, you know, there's no metabolizing of it. So it kind of moves throughout the body, you know, liver, kidneys, it's being filtered all over the place, right? And the body really doesn't know. They're like, okay, we're going to put it over here. And that's ca causing degradation of the cells, which can then turn into disease. Essential oils are metabolized through the body. One of the things that that means though, is that when you use essential oils topically is that it, they, they usually will typically do that in four hours. So you're going to use them a little bit more frequently than you would in RX medication, but going back to the perfect day. So, you know, um, wild orange and peppermint in the morning is great. We suggest a citrus specifically bergamot, um, in the afternoon because it is an, a stimulant, an appetite stimulant. Um, and also because it's a citrus, it's a mood elevator, happy people like to do things that it encourages people, you know, that them to do social engagements, if there's activities, anything like that to try to get them and, and, you know, even ADLs, those types of things. And then of course, you know, around that three or four o'clock, you know, marker, when we start experiencing sundowning, lavender is going to be fantastic. Uh, lavender is great for reducing anxiety. It's going to reduce all that tension. It's going to be very calming. They've done lots of tests. This is actually the first essential oil that was ever discovered and it was discovered for a burn. So it's fantastic for the skin and it's very, very, it's great for sensitive skin. So when we talk about our vintage population, having that really thin skin, right? This is a good one to use. We don't typically see, you know, adverse reactions to it um, because it's calming. It's also great for sleep and a bedtime routine. Um, so this is something that can calm them, but it's also something that you want that to have them smell throughout the night because it will keep them in a deep REM sleep. So a lot of times we have, they don't sleep well, right? So the kind of surface sleep, this will help to keep them in a deeper sleep. And this is when we recommend, you know, you definitely want to do either a personal diffuser or an actual diffuser and not just simply topically because after that four hours, that kind of will wear off. So they, you know, typically we'll have people waking up in the middle of the night. They've done a lot of research and studies on a lavender. It's actually the most studied essential oil out there. They've shown um, EKGs of calm uh, EKG brain waves when smelling that. Um, it's great. Like I said, they've, they've done a lot of sleep things. The great thing is also is that it promotes balance in the morning. And when they get that deep, you know, restful sleep, it promotes daytime wakefulness. So this can be really great for their circadian rhythm and such. And, and, and a lot of other benefits, but mostly that very calming. And so, you know, whether you want them to, to not be frustrated, not be angry, you know, behaviors, those types of things. And the great thing is, is it's proactive, right? So a lot of times we're always reactive, right? When we're going to give a psychotropic medication, as Dr. Stelter said, right? That's 30 minutes later after we've already experienced the behavior and there's some time in there. We know those things are coming or those behaviors because we know our residents. This is something that we can do to prevent or to help, you know, ease that, that transition throughout the day. They want to do that consistently, you know, so every day, you know, the morning starts with that wild orange and peppermint and that during the day, excuse me, is always at bergamot. And then lavender is always at, you know, right before that sundowning time, right? This has to be every single day. And, and I actually did a focus group on this, which was wonderful during, um, a dining program that we had uh, developed for a company that I was contracting with. And the funny part is, is so the residents get the immediate reaction, right? Because it only takes 22 seconds to start working. But what happens is, is because it starts to become what's called part of procedural memory, right? They learn over time what those scents mean, right? It takes about four weeks for that to happen, but they will start to learn that that scent means this is it's time to do this or that. So what we when we used it during the um, dining uh, procedures, uh, for those residents who can distinct the smell, right? They still had their ability to smell. Now they still benefited anyways for those who couldn't, but the people who could distinct the smell, when they smelled citrus, they knew it was time to eat. So you literally would see residents wheeling down the hallway by themselves or from the living room to the dining area. 
So this promoted them to be independent, which was great for them, obviously, to be able to do for themselves. We want to promote that as much as possible. And even more fantastic, too, for the for the staff, because the staff could tend to the residents who really needed the help. And for those who didn't need assistance in wheeling to the dining room, they the residents would do that themselves. Right. So they learned after about four weeks this is what the smell means. And this is what I should be doing. Cause you often get that question. The residents say, what should I be doing right now? Right. You know, um, am I supposed to be somewhere, you know, and the, these scents help to guide the day where they feel set up for success. They feel purposeful. They feel instructed. They know what to do. You know, they feel, per, you know, um, like they know what timeline it is throughout the day. Right. Just a, it's just a beautiful thing to see and for them to be able to experience on a daily basis. So consistency is key. So with that, if they, is that more like the, and I'm, it's probably not the right term, but is that more like their subconscious reacting to those smells? Like it's not, it's not necessarily it's, a memory memory. It's so what happens is, is that it plays on the hippocampus area, right? And so because they have associated this, this experience with this smell, every single day, they start to understand that's what that means. It's very similar to how children before the age of five, when they, you know, children start to learn routine, but they only learn routine through the use of their senses, what they're seeing and hearing and tasting and touching and smelling, right? Just like they know, you know, what, when it's time to eat, you know, they start to learn that over, uh, you know, a period of time. They know when it's bedtime, right? If, if mom is, uh, mom or dad are putting their child down in the same way every single night, the child knows it's time to go to bed, right? And they didn't read that in a book somewhere. They didn't, they weren't educated by taking a class. They learned it all through their use of their senses. Well, for people with dementia, when they're progressing through their disease, they start to become, they start to developmentally mimic a lot of what children do. And that's why sensory stimulation is so powerful because we know it works with children before the age of five. And with people with dementia, they're regressing back to an infancy type uh, state. And so it does work well with people with dementia as well. We just do it in a very dignified fashion, of course. Um, but we're playing on the fact of this theory called retrogenesis. It was coined by Dr. Barry Reisberg, and he th showed through research that everything progresses, you know, back to infancy. And so a lot of uh, folks who are moderate to late stage dementia, they unfortunately have a developmental age of anywhere from seven years old to four weeks old. And so we're in that prime spot where we know how children learn. So if we mimic that for people with dementia, people with dementia can still learn too. They just learn through their senses called sensory based information. So a little bit different. So it's really a wonderful tool when we try to and that's all part of the dementia connection model is this understanding about what's going on and then how to um, use these tools every single day. And your main tool is sensory stimulation. And that's why we love essential oil use. Sounds wonderful to me. Now, I have a, like kind of like a twist on this topic because you're mentioning citrus and bergamot and lavender and peppermint. Those are all teas, which is my drink of choice. So is there any benefit from actually ingest i mean obviously you're not going to ingest essential oils please don't do that that sounds horrifying i'm, I'm getting heartburn thinking about that option don't do it <laughs> but do you get any benefits from ingesting teas made with the same plants i would assume it would be a less benefit it's less so if it give you just kind of statistic if you like herbs because that's actually the herb version right is put in the teas essential oils are 50 to 70 times more powerful than the herb version of it so yes, you get benefit. You know, you're thinking about your Roman chamomile tea, those types of things. Um, and yes, they can be calming, but you are, are certainly not going to get the oomph that you would with the essential oil. Um, so there are some essential oils that are okay for ingesting. That's a whole nother topic, but things like that, like, you know, I do put a drop of Roman chamomile in my tea and I drink it and that'll knock me out, you know? So if I have just the herb version, I mean, it's just nice, you know, and it's, it's calming, but you know, the other will, yeah, a little more powerful. Little more care. Makes sense. And I would, I would assume that you would, it would have to be more of an herbal version, which is not my favorite at all. I like black flavored black tea. So the benefits are probably even more reduced because of the caffeine and the process of making tea and all that good stuff. I just, I was curious because Every one of those oils you've mentioned are in a tea that I really enjoy. So it's like, yeah. that's where my brain goes. So Absolutely. we've talked about how they benefit the person living with, you know, some form of dementia. And obviously the perfect day doesn't, isn't just 
prescribed, so to speak, for somebody with a cognitive impairment. I, I can, I'm thinking I probably should use the wild orange oil and peppermint in the morning, even though I'm usually pretty awake and I do my workouts in the morning, but might try it just to give it a little more boost because there are days like today, I'm feeling a little, I think it's because last week was very stressful. So I'm feeling a little still frazzled from all that. And, um, a definitely call, a cup of coffee in the morning. Right. So yeah. it feels like you get that oomph in the morning, which is great. Yeah. No Plus coffee. I don't like, I don't like coffee. I'm tea, tea and water. That's all I drink. <laughs> there you go. So you can use the essential oils in replace of that. <laughs> one of the, te- uh, one of the trials that they did with peppermint is that it actually allows the, the brain to get a 28% more oxygen than it currently gets because of the fact that it opens up that so much. So you think about when you get tired and such, that's, you know, less oxygen going to the brain, you're taking shallower breaths, those types of things. So this is a really good way to encourage deeper breaths. So it's a great thing to use before you work out. No. Oh, okay. Well, you've got me convinced. So we know, so obviously people that are caring for somebody with a cognitive impairment are going to benefit from following the perfect day, essential oil uh, plan. What other essential oils would be beneficial for the population in general? Like I'm going to be a little selfish and ask what's one that works good with allergies? Because my husband has horrible allergies. They cannot figure out what he's allergic to. And there's something now that's just freaking out of the sinuses. And it's like, I'd rather use an essential oil than some other in with a pillow. So <laughs> do you have any recommendations for like, because I know a lot of people suffer from allergies. We're, we're right into the very beginning of spring when we're recording this. This is coming out in May or June, I think it is. So people will still be dealing with seasonal type allergies and you know, there's so many over-the-counter medications and prescription medications. And once you've run through all those and you're still suffering, it's time to look at something else. Yeah. A combination of lemon, lavender, and peppermint. Lemon, lemon, lavender. Oh, that sounds like a good tea. <laughs> <laughs> you can, yes. I mean, and you can do this lots of ways. I speak to this because there's lots of allergies that were, you know, in the house. And my husband actually used to be on an EpiPen. Um, he no longer needs it. Um, that's good. My so, husband is not that bad, but <laughs> so lemon, lavender, and peppermint, um, that combination in equal parts is a fantastic alternative. So if you blend it, like, you know, she was saying equal parts, you can put like two drops of lemon, two drops of lavender, two, two drops of peppermint in there. And then we blending is what we call it. And then you just put your diffuser on and there you go. So, okay. I'm going to, I'm going to try that on him. I, I think I have lemon and peppermint. I have to go look. I just, we moved recently. My essential oils, you know, popped up out of a box. Like, hey, there they are. (laughs) I don't, I'm pretty certain I don't have lavender. So I'll have to fix that. But um, I want to try lavender because I have a tendency to wake up briefly a couple of times a night. Mostly it's because I need to use the bathroom. So it might be nice if I can. I, I have a trick for going back to sleep pretty quickly. That's listening to podcasts. So <laughs> <laughs> I have to find ones that I'm not interested in. Cause sometimes it's like, well, this is really interesting. The next thing you know, you've been listening for 45 minutes. That sort of defeats the purpose. So some of the like 2020s that have like the very um, produced modulated voice, I swear five minutes <laughs> gone. <laughs> I don't know what it is about the modulation of the voice, but I discovered if I fall asleep in front of the TV and then get up and go to bed, I can lay there for an hour and not go back to sleep. But as soon as I put the TV back on, I'm out like a light, but obviously the TV is, you know, it'll just play all night and that's not good for us. So I just, I put in like a 30 minute podcast and I'm asleep and then it's over and I'm out. (laughs) Works really well. It's very strange but whatever works. So I'll use a little lavender to help with that. What other common issues does the general population have that you would suggest people try in an essential oil for? We talked about allergies, focus, tiredness. I say, I know that, you know, people are still amidst the pandemic, I know things are slowing down a bit, but you know, everything is uncertain. So a lot of people have been dealing with anxiety and depression and, you know, difficulty socializing, going back into to group settings and things like that. So 
a couple oils we recommend. Um, a lot of the citruses, like uh, Jessica mentioned, help boost mood. Um, and so that would be, you know, great in, you know, if you're feeling down, you're feeling, you know, irritable, you know, those kinds of things. Um, and then for socializing, actually, Ylang Ylang is a great uh socializer, if you will. Right. Um, and so it helps people kind of get out of their shell and feel more comfortable in group settings. So that'd be something else that we recommend too. So oh, better Rosemary. than wine, <laughs> the Yang Lang, I think I've pronounced that right, is better than wine. <laughs> <laughs> we also <laughs> say, <laughs> see a lot of people think that a lot of people get uncomfortable in group sessions settings because I don't mm -hmm. drink and it's mostly wine gives me really wicked heartburn. So that's out. Um, I don't like the taste of beer and the stuff that I do like, it's got so much sugar and calories in it. It's like, yeah, no, thanks. I'll have a brownie instead. These are my yeah. choices. So it's not at all a moral or health per se. It's just choice. It's like, I would rather eat a brownie, you know, generally get pulled over driving while I'm brownie or cake. So, you know, there's like a lot of benefits <laughs> to having dessert versus wine but that's just me so it it i've done a couple events in our new house where maybe if i was birdie well they didn't seem to have a problem with socializing and they i don't think people were aware that i wasn't drinking so but i've had that experience where people are like they i think they get uncomfortable because they're drinking and i'm not and they feel like they feel so self-conscious so i'll have to i'll have to remember that one the next time i have a party and then you started to say something. Oh, rosemary. Jessica was talking rosemary. about rosemary. So rosemary actually is associated with memory. Um, so rosemary can be great. Like, you know, if you walk into a room and you, what did I come in here for? How many, you know, how many of us have done that, right? You can start sniffing your rosemary. Rosemary actually decreases beta waves and increases alpha waves. Your beta waves are your, you know, daydreaming waves. And, you know, so you can, it, it really helps to focus and concentration. Rosemary is associated with a lot of clinical trials in memory. Um, this is something that, you know, for test taking, uh, there was actually a clinical trial with nurses who used rosemary. Um, another one that's a really one that's kind of near and dear to my heart is, well, two, is cedarwood and vetiver. Um, I, have a, I have a son who has ADHD as well as um, sensory processing disorder, um, and we were able to keep him off of Ritalin. He was diagnosed at seven, and he has never taken a psychotropic medication. He just turned 18 last week and or two weeks ago yes and um cedarwood was phenomenal it was actually used in some testing for focus um and the great thing about it is it's focus but also because it's a tree is very grounding um, a lot of times you know it'd be very difficult for him to sit in his seat you know the problem is is you know everybody always says says they can't focus and, and, and actually they're focusing on everything they hear the clock ticking somebody's talking behind them or what have you and cedar would really helps to kind of drown out that calming you know and and get them focused in so cedar wood and vetiver have very similar therapeutic benefits that way and then one other special mention, and I think this is probably my last two and a half years, is eucalyptus. Eucalyptus has hundreds of studies. It is the most powerful antiviral in, 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 that there is as far as essential oils are concerned. And we know that eucalyptus is fantastic for opening up those airways, right? So if we're experiencing anything viral, a lot of times what happens, right? We, we get sent home because it lives on the inside of the cells and we don't have medications for that, right? Antibacterials aren't going to work for that. And so, um, you know, sometimes we're dead in the water with, you know, medications and such. So eucalyptus can be a phenomenal thing for, you know, being preventative during and even afterwards. So it's a great essential oil to use. Um, we actually even used to put put that a little spray of that on everybody's masks because everybody, you know, having trouble breathing and what have you, and it opens up those airways. Right. But it was great to put on the surface of that because, you know, when my kids were going to school with the masks and stuff on, I do have a six-year-old who, you know, it was wet and who knows for eight hours in the dark and whatever else came out of her mouth. Right. So spraying that on there, it kind of gave me a little bit of a sense of, you know, helping to reduce, you know, anything that was going on there. So um, yeah, those are some really great, you know, essential oils to use as tools. And and again, you can bring them in for anybody. It doesn't matter, you know, little child, us, you know, our our, our vintage population, whatever the case may be. Um, 
but very, very unique tool, but something that there is literally, I have short of a broken bone, I have not seen an essential oil that isn't for something that's going on inside the body. We actually started to um, put this out there for caregivers and for staff to use. So we paired up with uh, Memory Lane TV and Memory Lane TV has created 10 years of footage that was specific for people with dementia. And it's really a way to incorporate the um, visual and auditory scent in our sense and being able to use those as ways to help this process of what we're talking about here, right, is to uh, produce good memories and to promote positive feelings. And so we actually partnered with them and we created the olfactory side of this. So we created olfactory toolboxes. And so people can watch Memory Lane TV and uh, diffuse or put on their personal diffuser dots for their loved one, um, even for their residents if they're in the community. And the residents will watch Memory Lane TV and they can use the olfactory system as well. Or you can just use the olfactory toolboxes by themselves. And so if you go to our one of our websites, it's neuroessenceolfactorytoolbox.com. You can check out the boxes that we have there. Um, we have it for every season. Um, so that way it's it's specific to you know be able to enjoy the, the season itself. But uh, when you watch Memory Lane TV, you can use it, you know, use some of their footage. It it'll par- partner their footage with the scent that you're smelling, which is great. So that sounds really interesting. I mean, I'm I'm very visual being a photographer and an artist. I know with podcasting, that's not visual, but <laughs> that's my life now. So that's fine. But I I like that combination. That sounds really interesting. And so before we get too far away from this question, so we've we've talked about, okay, so my husband also has ADD, and I'm going to strongly suggest those two oils to my daughter because her husband has really bad ADHD. I mean, he gets twitchy all the time. It's and he's described his ADHD as like a whiteboard with just just that's just covered. And, you know, somebody's erasing something important to put something else on. It's just like it's a really good visualization for the two of us. So he might benefit from that as well. I can't imagine it would hurt. But if we're burning our eucalyptus or diffusing, excuse me, eucalyptus and the cedar wood and the lemon lavender pepper. It's like, I'm assuming we want to not blend them all together at once and burn them all over the house so that our house smells like Mother Nature went berserk. Yes. So you would, yeah, you would want to use, you know, if you, you're you targeting a specific benefit, um, you, do, you know, blending too many of them, you know, it just, it, it's just degrading the amount. It's just diluting. Um, so yeah, different times of the day, you know, when you're, you're, you're experiencing those, the great thing, you know, for your husband, if he wants to, he can wear the oils, um, or he can use a personal diffuser dot himself so that, you know, if you have a diffuser going in the home for a specific target that he is getting that benefit because of his allergies, you know, so there's different ways to implement that, um, and still get, you know, the benefits of each of them and not dilute it. (laughs) Not have, not smell like mother nature barfed in your living room. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, that's so good. <laughs> no, that's we don't so want good. that smell. Uh, but we, I was just on a cycling research trip and we would ride through certain areas and you could smell the flowers and the orange blossoms. Oh gosh, it was so good. And you could not ride through that stretch of road and not just like feel really happy. So I, yeah. I can, I'm like all excited. I'm going to go find my oils and I don't have a diffuser. I'm going to have to fix that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to fix that. So where can people find more about you and your products? It's neuroessence.org, correct? So that's changed. Um, so okay. if they're interested in the uh, olfactory toolboxes, it's neuroessenceolfactorytoolbox.com. And then we also are creating right now, which is really exciting, the Dementia Connection Institute. Uh, it is the first institute offered for family caregivers and professionals. So what we're doing now is we provide a lot of uh, live training and presentations, but we are creating a online classroom. So the caregiver, the staff member, an organization can log on and they can get uh, continued education for dementia care, which is great. Uh, We also are building a certification so people can become Dementia Connection Specialists or DCSs, and it's the first uh, certification program for family caregivers, too, uh, which is really great. Um, 
And then we're creating a train the trainer program too. So professionals can become trainers and be able to spread the love of this training. So, um, so we're really excited about this new venture that we're on. Um, we really wanted to take our tools and our research and really take it to the next level. And so we did through the Institute. Um, and then I just want to provide the other resource, which we've talked about, Jennifer. Uh, my book came out in October, The Busy Caregiver's Guide to Advance Alzheimer's Disease. And we talk a lot about, I talk, I talk a lot about essential oil use in there, as well as all kinds of other multi-sensory tools that can be used. I describe what the dementia connection model is, why you need to use it, and then how do you use it? And so there's tons of uh, different approaches to care in there. And what's great, it's a workbook style. So the staff member or the caregiver can take notes as they're going through it and working with the person that they're caring for and see what's working, what's not working. And by the end, they'll have a full toolbox, which is great. Now, the book is great. I should have picked it up so I could show it on camera, but I it's in there. one of the, I have three different <laughs> spots with books in them. So because my Alzheimer's library is getting rather large, which is good. There you go. Justice get oh they both got yeah. it. I'm I'm of the, course I'm the on ball. But yes, yeah, and then, it on our website. Um, so our our website to our institute is dementiaconnectioninstitute.org, and they can uh, find the book on there too. So so all of those websites are linked. The book is linked, and mm -hmm. the episodes that Jennifer was just referring to are also linked. So if you missed those back in December 2019. Not 2019, 2021. Lord, the last two years have been a lot. <laughs> I'm yeah. just like trying to erase those two years from my mind. Oh, Rosemary. <laughs> Rosemary, okay. Well, now that does bring up a quick question. I have a huge rosemary plant, one for cooking. And is there anything I could do with that? I mean, obviously, probably can't distill the oil out of it very easily or at all. <laughs> But as unless you have cold it. press extraction, if you have a cold press extraction machine, actually you can buy them on Amazon now in small, <laughs> you know, they're like 500 bucks, but you can do that. Yeah, no, <laughs> that yeah. sounds like a lot of work. Um, but yeah, no, my plant needs trimming, which either means drying or eating or all of the above. So I thought I better ask, but you know, maybe if I need a quick burst of, um, like memory boost, I'll just go face plant in the plant for and take a deep breath. Absolutely, <laughs> definitely. I just have to make sure the dog well, didn't pee on smelling. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's on the deck, and sometimes he goes instead of going downstairs, he goes. Sometimes he gets confused, or you know, he's a boy. He marks territory, so <laughs> it's like <laughs> don't ever use the plant straight without washing it off around here. <laughs> that is way too much information. Sorry, folks. So this has been fantastic. I am super excited to learn more about everything we just discussed. So I'm going to definitely check out the sites. And like I said, they'll be linked in the show notes. And I really appreciate that you guys came back. Jennifer, I think, is the second guest that's been on three times. So she's in a very rare group of people. So and I'm glad that she brought Jessica. Again. What was that? I said, thank you. We'd love to be back again, too. <laughs> oh, well, I'm not going anywhere. So I'm, you know, this is the beginning of year five, which blows my mind because it doesn't seem like I've been doing this that long. But like I said, the last two years were a lot. So we'll just fast forward through those, I guess. And, you know, I hope people take advantage of the the um, essential oil knowledge and the dementia toolkit and all the stuff that we just mentioned. I don't want to butcher all the names because I will. We all know that. <laughs> And I'm sure we'll find another time. We'll probably get back together and talk about the training that you guys are all working on. Absolutely. We appreciate it. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Fading Memories is also available wherever you get your favorite podcasts.